Say, I am the righteousness of God. We can go even a step further. Ready? Let's go even a step further. Ready? Say, I am a child of God. Say it again. I am a child of God. No, you're a child of Virginia and Ray Lozano. Those are my natural parents. But my true self is I'm actually born from God. And I have every right that Jesus has because the cross now forces God to see you just like he sees Jesus Christ. Take that. Receive it. Don't fight it. You see how it's heavy? Because we still see ourselves one way. I was named Loco J, Looney Tune, whatever you want to call me. When I come to Christ, I still think of myself this way. But God says, that's not who you are anymore. I don't care what the tattoo says. I put a new name on you. Child of Almighty God. Child of El Shaddai. Child of the Most High God. Heavy. Sit down. These things have to be processed. You good? Say it with me. I am the righteousness of God. I looked it up in the Greek. It says, I mean this, it means being in right standing with God. So that means when God sees me, I'm as right with God in his eyes as Jesus is right now and as Adam was before he fell. Don't worry, I'm coming. Just, 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 let's just build into this. Say it with me. Jesus paid the price that we may have right standing with God. Tell your neighbor, when God sees you and God sees me, he's actually seeing Jesus, his righteousness. See, church, the believer has already been made the righteousness of God. This is what Paul tried to get across in his epistles where he says, I'm found in him, not having my own righteousness. No, no, but that which is through faith in Christ. I want you to read this with me out loud. Say, the righteousness which is from God, but it's by faith. That means you don't look righteous, you don't feel righteous, you don't talk righteous, you don't behave righteous, but by faith, you are the righteousness of God based on what God already said about you. Now, will we say it out loud? I am by faith what God says I am. I am the child of God. I am the righteousness of God. Clap like you believe it by faith. Clap like you receive it by faith. Clap like you speak it by faith. I am the righteousness of God. Can we go deeper? 
Yes or no? Okay. Meditating on this, God's promise, God's word in this area develops a righteousness mentality. Romans 12, 2, I want you to read this out loud. Say this with me. Matter of fact, tell your neighbor. This is a good one for the neighbor. Say, neighbor, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world. But tell your neighbor, let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. This is not just positive thinking. The Christian scientists, the positive thinkers have tapped into a level of this and have seen success. The problem is when you get them alone, they're still empty because you can't just change the mind and have real transformation. You have to first change the heart. Once you change the heart, you have to change the mind so the mind can catch up to who you really are. Our biggest problem, our biggest problem is not the devil. The devil is defeated. The devil is disarmed. The devil is dethroned. The devil has been stripped of his power. The problem is the devil worked on our minds for generations. You don't just have your mentality. I don't just have my mentality. We never just have our mentality. We have our grandpa's mentality. We have our great grandpa mentality. And every mentality that they picked up that had the curse, many of that was communicated with words. And we picked up that mentality and we believed something God never said we were or are. Come on, shout like we're going to pick up the mind of Christ. There's a teaching we do called Pharaoh's Taskmasters. This is, I need, I, man. Come on, pull this. Don't, don't, come on, get this word. Come on. That's revelation. Now listen, Pharaoh's Taskmasters were very unusual because these were the people who actually enslaved the Hebrew people, not for 100 years, not for two, not for three, but for 400 years. And the way they would pick a taskmaster is they would find the most aggressive children, the agitated and aggressive. They would pick them from the rest of the children. They would take those children. They understood they had a leadership gift. They would take those children. Then they would develop them in the art of uh, abuse, pain, manipulation, and control. And they would develop them in this context, like you would raise a doctor or a lawyer. They would raise up taskmasters, and then they would be released on the people of God to curse them, to cripple them, to tell them who they wanted them to be. Because there's no way you can build an empire on the back of slaves and the slaves are greater than the actual people that are enslaving them unless you enslave their mind. That was the genius of Pharaoh. For, so, so when they first captured the people of God, imagine the first hundred years must have been harder for the taskmasters. You're a slave. You're never going to be nobody. You're going to be poor. You're going to do this for the rest of your life. For the, the first hundred years, that was a lot of work for the taskmasters. But by the second hundred years, you don't need it. You don't even need the taskmasters because now the, the parents are communicating to the children what the taskmaster said they are. By the third, 300th year, they're believing it. By the 400th, you don't even need a taskmaster because the people People have been enslaved in their mind but the whole time they were covenant people they were the seed of Abraham they had a promise of prosperity and freedom but they never stepped into it because the devil had got a hold of their mind I wonder how many of God's people have that come on some bring my mirror somebody shout like we're gonna break this mentality off the people of God so the question becomes the question becomes who am I who am I who am I? Am I the righteousness of God? Or am I what I've been through? What I've gone through? Am I a product of my circumstances? 
Even watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. I'm a, pre, I'm a pastor. That's, but, but, but if my identity is not what God said I am, anything that's not rooted in who God said I am, you're in danger of losing. What if your identity is in the fact that you're a lawyer and you lose your law degree? Now you fall apart. What's your identity in? If it's not founded in who God says you are, you may not know it, but you are in danger. You don't even, you're one storm of life away from losing your mind. Somebody ought to help pastor preach a little bit. Come on. I'm breaking it down, y'all. One storm. I want you to say it again. Say, I am the righteousness of God. Not because I feel it. Not because I do right. Not because I live right. Not because I talk right. Not because I do everything perfect. Not because I go to church. Not because I tithe. Not because I'm a leader. I am the righteousness of God because of what Jesus Christ did for me. Somebody shout like that's who you are. Say it. That's who I am. Can we keep going or not? I, I can't leave you like this. Can I keep going? How are we doing? Where's Pastor Liz? She's here somewhere, right there. Hi, babe. Am I good? Okay. How many will give me three minutes? Three, six, nine, twelve. All right, we're good. We're good. All right. Let's say this. Say this. Righteousness is not a conduct. It's not a conduct. But it produces good conduct. You see, the believer no longer identifies with sin. But the believer identifies with his righteousness. That's why 1 Corinthians 15, 34 says, Awake to be aware of righteousness. And if you're aware of it, then you sin not. Let me, let me say this scripture. I didn't write, I was in my notes, but it's worth writing. Proverbs 29, 18 says this. Says, say it with me. Say, without a vision, the people have no boundaries. They have no restraint. So, so, so the reason I waited eight years for a wife was because I had a vision from God about my future marriage. And even though before I was with Christ, I was a wild guy, once I came to Christ, I stopped being a wild guy because I'm no longer a wild guy. I'm in Christ. I'm the righteousness of God and I'm waiting on the right one. Now I have restraints. Come on, somebody. At Clap like you got a vision. Clap like you got a dream. Clap like you got a purpose. Clap like you got assignment. Clap like you're going to marry the right one. Clap like you're going places in the kingdom. Shout like God has plans and purposes and pursuits for your life. Can I keep teaching? So meditating on the flesh and meditating on our failures will only develop a sinful mentality that will eventually lead us to more moral failure. But when we meditate on the things of the Spirit, it develops a righteous mentality. It's not, watch me, it's not I'm trying to do, I'm trying to do better. You already are better. <laughs> I'm trying to teach somebody how to come through. I, I thought you want your freedom. I thought you said I want my freedom. I want my freedom. You're, you're good? All right. Can we, let, let me teach you something here. So I remember I was in the recovery homes and we would do these car washes. And one time there was a joint that was put right there. And before if I saw a joint, I pick it up, it's on. But I saw the joint and something in me said, that ain't you no more. And the devil and my mind started talking. Oh yeah, that's you. You're going to take that joint. You're going to put it in your pocket. Ain't no one going to see it. And then after everyone's asleep at night, you and me and this joint are going to go around the back and we're going to smoke and we're going to get high. You got it? 
And my mind's like, okay. But my spirit said, that ain't you anymore. Come on. So, so me and my spirit <laughs> said, nah, devil, in my mind, nah, ain't going to happen. I left it. I walked away, and I realized. But see, if you teach somebody once a drug addict, always a drug addict, I understand what you're trying to do. You're trying to build safety and don't trust yourself. I get all that. And there's a season where you got to be insulated because you're too crazy to be left alone. I get it because you need a minute to find out who you are. But if 10 years later, you're still claiming you a drug addict, something is wrong because Jesus doesn't make drug addicts. Jesus is not a drug addict. Jesus is not poor. Jesus is not sick. Jesus is not weak. Jesus is not barely. Come on, somebody. Somebody shout. Say it again. I am the righteousness of God. I am a child of God. Come on, give God a praise and stand on your feet. So you got to talk to yourself constantly. Constantly. And this is not something like, this teaching is not something that you say, oh, I'm going to ask you to stand if you can. I'm going to close now. If you don't stand, I'm not going to close and we'll be here another long time and Spanish church going to get mad at us and everything. Okay, okay, Ron. Look, now look, 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 look. This teaching will get you free if you're struggling with a bondage or addiction. No, it's going to get you free. But it also, it's, it's, you're, 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 you're not going to say like in, 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 in 10 years, oh, I already know that. Because this teaching, it's so high. Because in reality, if I start dropping uh, what you really are, some of you will just, you'll just be like, what is this guy talking about? Because the truth is, the Bible says you are right now seated with Christ in heavenly places. Right now. Right now. Far above all principality and power. You got so much authority and power, you have no idea. But you, have, you and I have to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. This is where lifestyle of freedom comes in. This is where family group comes in. This is where watching the word. This, see, all I do is meditate on this day and night, day and night. Dia de noche, day and night. Dia de noche. Huh? Dia y noche. Same thing for me. Day and night. Dia y noche. Dia, dia y noche. Day and night, day and night, day and night. I'm not struggling with what I struggled in my beginning years because that ain't me no more. But I want to see myself the way God sees me in the kingdom as a ruler, as a leader, as a governor of the kingdom. Come on, tell your neighbor, you got to see yourself how God sees you. If you see it, you become it. If you see it, you believe it. If you see it, you can receive it. If you see the invisible, you can do the impossible. Somebody ought to clap like you believe God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all. So I tell you, and if you miss it, you, you blow it, like maybe some of you used to cuss a lot, and then you cuss, and you cuss the, at the dog, you kick the cat, you threw the goldfish out of the pond. Come on, somebody. And you feel really bad. What, what comes next? Shame, guilt, condemnation. And what does the devil tell you? Look, you ain't ever changing. Look at you. Look at you. And that's where you're in the battle. And you got to say, hey, just because I missed it doesn't mean I am sin anymore. I'm a new creation. Come on, talk to me, somebody. Talk to me, somebody. This is where you and I, we have to be quick. We have to be quick to confess our sin. And because he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sin and to cleanse us from all that unrighteousness it produced. Amen, somebody. Because if you're walking around with shame and guilt and condemnation, you, you, what's going to end up happening is you're going to blow it a few times and the devil's going to say, why are you going to church, you hypocrite? Look at you, hypocrite. Look at you, hypocrite. And how many people have left church because they messed up and the devil lied to them, put shame on them, put guilt on them, put condemnation on them? How many of you want to pray to God, but every time you pray, the guilt and the shame is so much you don't even pray anymore? No, my friend, you have to develop a new mentality. You have to come to God because he's the only one that can change you. Come on, somebody ought to shout in here. I'm trying to teach somebody how to pray. I said I'm trying to teach somebody how to pray. I'm trying to teach somebody how to walk up 
to the throne of grace boldly and say daddy I need some help daddy I need wisdom daddy I need direction daddy I need healing daddy I need provision and I'm going to close with this I close with this because because of time tell your neighbor the prayers the prayers let me say it this way tell your neighbor this God's ears are open to the prayers of a righteous person are you righteous oh no man oh no no I just I'm, I'm just an old sinner man I'm just I'm just trying to get better brother I just, wait 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 I'm not talking about your behavior I'm talking about what he died to make you what are you so then the Bible says the prayer say it the prayer tell your neighbor the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective do you believe your prayers are powerful and your prayers are effective I said do you believe your prayers are powerful you believe your prayers are effective oh no I don't have good prayer because you know I'm not a good person and I, and I, and I do these things no 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 you're you're not righteous because of what you've done you're righteous because of what he's done so y'all yeah, tell you this Jesus said this through Paul in Romans he said if you pray in the spirit and you pray right, you don't know what you pray for, but you pray in the spirit. He says, when you pray, God uses your prayers. God uses your prayer. He takes your prayer. This is prophetic. He, he takes your prayer. He receives your prayer, the righteous man's prayer. He hears your prayer. He takes your prayer. And as he's taking your prayer, then your prayer are allowing him to work out all these things together for your good. So all this circumstances and situation happen in marriage and family, whatever it may be, but your prayer allows the angels and allows God to begin to work it all out for your good. But the devil is trying to condemn you. You can't come pray. Look at you. Look at you. He's doing what he did to Adam and Eve in the garden. Look at you. Look at you. But you need to say, devil, look at you and look at him. I'm in the presence of God, not based on what I've done. I'm in the presence of God by faith. And by faith, I'm praying in the Holy Ghost. By faith, I'm asking in the name of Jesus. And God said he will answer. So I want you to lift your flyers up to heaven right now. Because I believe God wants your entire family saved. I believe God wants your entire household saved. And I'm going to take the next 30 seconds and I'm going to pray that God would save your entire house. If you don't have a flower, lift your hand or lift something. Father, in Jesus' name, according to your word, it is your will. The Son of Man came to seek and save that which has been lost. And Lord, right now, I ask boldly and confidently that you would save our family. You said, believe on the Lord Jesus and we and our house would be saved. Save our children, save our grandchildren, save our family, save our nieces, our nephew, our aunt, our uncle, our mom, our dad, our grandparents, our great grandparents. Lord, in Jesus' name, save all of our entire house somebody worship god somebody thank god somebody praise god